Hello, welcome. Yanava. Have you ever had a spiritual moment that was so amazing? It left you in shock and awe. And it was over, said done, you would swear from soul to bones that you were bliss fucked. Tonight, Center of Light Foundation. We're going to be talking about this guy in a little while. Welcome to Center of Light. Good to see you tonight. Have you ever been in a state of such shock and awe that you came to the conclusion eventually that you were bliss fucked? I love that word. Good to see everyone. Center of Light Foundation. Speaking of which, I want to say thank you again to you, Dr. Kata Kamara. All of us for doing the work we are doing. Center of Light Fundraiser. Thank you all who have contributed however you tr contributed. Prayer, share, care, monetary, military, state of such shock and awe. I had to refresh the page. Let's see what's happening on YouTube. Uh, I see a brand new friend. 
Sue Ashwell, I don't know if she's still here. Let's see what's going on in the room. Hello, Sarah Peterson. Sarah Peterson, the other day I thought you were from South Louisiana. My mistake. Yeah, I confused you with somebody else. My beautiful, lovely Rena. My, as if I own her. Well, we own a piece of each other's heart. That's for sure. Um, for those who are interested in donating to the fundraiser, thank you very much. Tonight is Center of Light, Shock and Awe. I just got to do it again. I got a new toy. Bliss fuck. Have you ever been bliss fucked? I'm probably going to use that word tonight because it's in a certain context that allows me a little more privilege. Well, it always allows me a privilege. I mean, I have freedom of speech, but you get the idea. Welcome to Center of Light. Let's get down to some beeswax. I did a presentation last night on... I got one that can see. They live. So instead of blaming the others, it's about reclaiming the we. See? In such a way tonight is shock and awe. And in taking responsibility, we find ourselves in awe. And it shocks the living shit out of us. Like your hand in an electrical outlet, as it's supposed to be. Supposed to knock you back, metaphorically, metaphysically, shock and awe, bliss fucked. You feel like the divine is coming to your soul and gave you some love. <laughs> Still checking a couple things, lots of new things happening. Thank you for your patience. I have to do this while I go. So, uh, I have a new teacher I'm presenting tonight. You've seen this cat before. Sexy he is in all of his motivational, articulate. Wow. This boy is no joke. I'm going to save his name for a little later. Let me check the rooms a little once more, one more time so I can see what's happening. I'm learning as I'm doing this, and we'll get right down to some beeswax. Carl Laparus in the house, Dwayne Goodwin in the house. Look, Carl and Dwayne, are you guys conversing behind? <laughs> Every time Carl or Dwayne shows up, y'all show up together. I'm going to South Louisiana tomorrow, everyone, to see my dad for um, Easter. Okay. Two sacks of crawfish waiting. One of those are for me. And Dwayne Goodwin, D. Goodwin, wants to know what's the $5 word. <laughs> Everybody welcome. Let's get down to some business. Center of Light Foundation. Many years of my life, my beautiful life, everything you do in your beautiful life, has come to a culmination with many of you, many of you are going to be bringing on board soon for the Center of Light Foundation. But Dr. Kate Kamara and I are jumping in creating an LLC we'll see I'm going to be going away for a week to see my dad <laughs> Carl Laparus uh, a drummer friend of mine as well as Dwayne a bass player friend of mine back when we were 15, 16, 17 years old we had a band they had a band called North Star and I had a band called I think it was called Sassy we combined forces and became no, we became sad. Whatever, whatever. You get the idea. So I know these knuckleheads from way back. So tonight we're going to be talking about getting bliss fucked. What is bliss fucked? It sounds so repulsive as to why I love it so much. <laughs> what is bliss fucked? I'll give you an idea what bliss fucked is. Years ago, Years ago, when I first learned of this avatar, what is an avatar? God on earth and the story. You don't have to like it. You can dislike, you don't have to believe it, that all that is irrelevant. It came to me in a dream experience. 
<laughs> this is what bliss fucked is. When it comes to a state of full-blown consciousness, this handsome young man with this wonderful hairdo, <laughs> he's standing away from me, and there are three of us. A lady, a man, and me. And he is 100 feet away. So I come to a state of realization. <laughs> wow, that's Sathi Sai Baba. And he points to the lady who is first over here. And he looks at her and says, ba basically, hang on, I'm about to leave you in shock and awe. You are about to be bliss fucked. <laughs> Hello, Kelly Bauman. Carl says, yes, we became sassy. We're still sassy. So he points to the lady and basically says, you better hang on to your britches. And he turns his hand to materialize a bullet of light from his heart. And he shows all of us this bullet of light about the size of what they call a bully marble, about the size of a quarter. And he throws it at this woman. And like slow motion, it comes to her and hits her in the chest. And she falls on the ground. <laughs> and he comes all the way to her as if gliding on water. And she's freaking out. She is totally freaking out in a blissful way. But I didn't know that. I just know the woman over here is freaking out. And in her freaking outness, Sathya Sai Baba begins to wave his arms through her being. Then it, that section of it ended. And then there's a guy, the guy that was next to me. Everything's backwards. The guy next to me, Sai Baba points to him, manifests a bullet of light from his heart, and throws it at the dude. Same exact thing happens. Right? So now, <laughs> it's my turn. And because I'm a little more special than the other two, <laughs> more so because now it's about me. It's basically my turn. This is my experience. He points to me, manifests a bullet of light out of his heart, and he throws it at me. And like a slow motion movie scene. It took forever to get here, there. But when it did, I understand the shock and awe and the bliss fuck from the two previous of me. When this ball of light came into my chest, I fell to the floor and I began to utter this foreign light language that I don't remember. And then Sathya Sai Baba began to wave his arm through my being. I was laying there in the absolute most putty, hot melted butter, KY jelly, <laughs> getting bliss fucked. An absolute bliss. And then he began to wave his arms through my being. Many years ago, I had a cognitive soul experience like the one I just told you. I was riding through a valley on a train, an open car train, open box train. Everyone, there's no elements, it's just a train. And there were people everywhere, probably 60 people spread out, and there's however many car train. It was midnight. The moon was just huge and beautiful. It lit the whole canopy, the whole sky, a canopy of stars. It was warm. There was a warm breeze as we were trekking down the track towards Sathya Sai Baba's ashram. This feeling I had and this experience 
It's a drug. I want it again. So much so, I wanted to integrate it within myself and that it never leaves me ever again. Shock and awe, bliss fuck. The feeling was, I'm going to the land of forever, to Satya Sai Baba's ashram, freedom, liberation, and all that it means and entails. Homecoming, crossing the bridge to the soul. Why do I do what I do? Because I want to be bliss fucked. I want to be a bliss fuck slut. <laughs> it's about having these levels of spiritual elation. Spiritual masturbation. Keith, this sounds like smut. It's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with smut. I've seen it before. I use these words intentionally because they have power. They put us in a space of attention. When we begin to touch ourselves on deeper and deeper and deeper levels, we begin to live every day in shock and awe. And everything becomes sexual bliss, an exchange of energy, and there's nothing we miss. It's about being present. It's about being able to see. Do you see? Shock and awe, bliss. Don't miss an opportunity. The one you're living in is giving all of that amazing chance to move back into the garden, but we don't have to die to do it. We have to live to do it. So who is, let me just make sure I got everything down before we get into. Let me ask you this question. All right, so tonight is sort of like shock and all bliss fuck, but you gotta kiss me first. You gotta buy me dinner. I'll take McDonald's if that's all you got. What is the universe that, it, what is this universe that is so infinitely vast as well as infinitesimally small? And how can we begin to grasp it? Is to desire, thirst, yearn, burn, churn for said shock and awe, blissful experiences. All right. John Thaddeus Fior. What's up, Broham Samich? Louis Machi. Hello, Kelly. Uh, yes, they do. Words are powerful. <laughs> Kelly says she loves some McDonald's. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then John says, hey, brother, here's your kiss. But I need some tongue. <laughs> Why were you young? So, uh, cameo appearance. Audio bite. I have to bury these audio bites in sound so I don't get panking on my hiney. So who is the new guy, new person? You've seen him before. He's powerful. He is truly a wordsmith. John goes, <laughs> I'm jacking with you. Let me choose another word. I'm messing with you. <laughs> You've seen him before. He's a powerful motivational speaker, articulate, very conscious very deliberate in what he says. He is so full of passion. Uh, you can liken that to sometimes when I, being from South Louisiana, I talk, I use my hands, because I get into it. He may not use his hands so much, but he so gets into the fire. He gets lost in it. He gets bliss fucked. And you can see it if you can see the video. And you've seen him before. He is just one of my favorites. Who is he? Since tonight is center of light, shock, and all bliss, fuck. This, the title of this segment from Jason Silva is called Godgasms. <laughs> Enjoy it. I will see you in a second. I am oriented around aesthetic experiences. I live for emergent experiences that overwhelm our 
our sensory apparatus with harmony and pattern. So these kinds of experiences usually, usually mediated by powerful music and image can emotionally jolt us um, and, and they hurl us into this experience that some describe as, as cognitive ecstasy. Uh, I've heard it also described as an exhilarating neurostorm of intense intellectual pleasure. I mean, just think about it, right? An exhilarating neurostorm, right? When the dots connect and a new gestalt is revealed. These are experiences suffused with meaning. They are, again, exhilarating neurostorms of intense intellectual pleasure, right? Cognitive ecstasy, aesthetic ecstasy. What the French call frisson, when the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Now, a better way to describe this is perhaps to use the term godgasm. <laughs> now, why, why godgasm? Well, think about it. Um, <sighs> Joseph Campbell famously said that God is that which exceeds our intellectual capacity, that which is ineffable and beyond cognitive understanding. To know God is an intuitive thing, a sense of the beyond, a sense of something that exceeds us, right? So that's, that's Joseph Campbell's definition of God. Now I have had, even though I am not religious, I have had religious experiences when beholding an aesthetic work. I have been carried away to realms beyond thought, realms that are all heart, all love, all God, right? And these realms are orgasmic. It is not, it is not inaccurate to describe it as a kind of orgasm, right? An aesthetic orgasm. There are certain scenes and certain films and certain moments and certain songs that lift me to domains that are, again, <laughs> orgasmic and godlike. And so I think it's fair then to blend those words into one and to say that these experiences are godgasmic. <laughs> Godgasms and that Godgasms are existentially reassuring for they dissipate all of our existential angst and all of our fears of meaninglessness and instead they envelop us in light and love and awe. And so the fact that we can mediate a godgasm, that we can use music and image and editing and stage design and intention setting and, and, and deploy ecstatic technologies like psychedelics, we can engineer and steward godgasms makes us ecstatic technicians of the sacred in no small ways. We are shamanic in that we can create portals to godgasms, to the realms in which we can godgasm. And I, I think that the fact that we have the creativity and the agency to be able to consciously and intentionally author these experiences for ourselves is, is a kind of cosmological self-pleasure, right? That we can beautifully and delightfully make ourselves godgasm in our re on a regular basis and, and heal ourselves of so many of our fractures. And that's such a delight. All contradictions are reconciled. Man has surpassed the gods. 
All of our desires abolished in the plenitude of their satisfaction, as Roland Barthes said. And it just makes me so happy. It makes me so happy for it. It erases any and all feelings of powerlessness and any and all feelings of constraint. For instead I feel boundless in my creative capacity to create for myself and for anyone who resonates um, protocols and modalities to have our way with the cosmos. <laughs> what was that? Was it Napoleon who said music is proof the human race is greater than it knows? Yeah. It's a glimpse, it's an intimation, it's a divination, it's an invitation. That there is more to us than nature allows. Yeah. So that's that. We wish you godgasms and lovegasms. Oh yeah. And orgasms. Cheers. Welcome back to Center of Light. Tonight, we are having awe-gasms. <laughs> Tonight is Center of Light. Shh, everything's backwards. Shock and awe. Bliss fuck. Awe-gasms. God-gasms. What are they? I don't know what they are, but the ones I've had... Whew. Is that not what we're doing? Every being in the universe is seeking... Godgasms, awe-gasms, shock, bliss to be bliss fucked. Every being in the universe is seeking eternal bliss. Even through the eternal miss of doing it, erroneously, evil, unconscious or not. You see, because it's the propelling force. Everyone wants better, even in their own unconsciousness. And doing ridiculous things, trying to be in shock and awe. Everyone wants to be in bliss, even in their misery. Some people are blissful in their misery, strangely, ironically. This is a scenario. So we have the leverage, the step up, the support when we become conscious to move into that without the misery. My bro D. Goodwin says <clears throat> he's had a few chasing the next one, right? Like 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 you, I am chasing the next one. But like you, I am sure we are realizing that it's not about the chasing of the next one. It's about the facing of the this one. The one that is not so shock and awing, except in the way that we don't really would consciously choose. I'm gonna go to a song break for my new album. <laughs> I've been saying I've been working. I've been working on this album for. It's been a year. I worked on it for a month, two months. Got a couple ideas out. It's nowhere near mastering. It's nowhere near done. But I'm gonna play a song from that. Why? Because it's shocking, all bliss, fuck, fun. Uh, let's see what we're gonna play. How about? And then after this song, I'm gonna come back into another audio bite from Big Daddy Jason Silver as to what inspired me. For this presentation tonight, that video soundbite is going to be called Bliss Fuck. Actually, it's called the Bliss, Bliss Fuck Crucifixion. So you can see why I left that crucifixion. 
But if you understand it, you understand exactly what it's what it means. When you get in such an amazing experience with God itself, God penetrates your entire being, and you have an orgasm, a godgasm. <laughs> then you understand the bliss fuck crucifixion because a part of us will die and that amalgamation and unification of the spirit it will die it will be a crucifixion and a resurrect rec, erection erection resurrection words are powerful they are all connected they are all resurrected when we understand what they are let's see what we're going to play from my album soon to be called Samadhi in the cave of Samadhi. Being, I'm just by myself, leave me alone. It's me. I'm in my garden. I'm on stage. I'm painting. I'm presenting. <laughs> um, infected with love, or what do you want now? Infected with love, what do you want now? Infected with love, what do you want now? Infected with love. We want Godgasms. See you shortly.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Tonight is Center of Light Shock and Awe. We're having God-gasms and awe-gasms. We're all enjoying this beautiful, undeniable bliss fuck. That was off of my soon-to-be, <laughs> could be five years. I played everything. I had. I have to do everything. For me, it's for me only. It, it, but it's an, from an album soon to be called Samadhi. Tonight is Center of Light, Shock and All. Shock and All. Shock. Whoa. You've been taken back, but really you've been taken further within. And all, which is, oh my dear Lord, what is this that's happening to me? And of course, it takes some time to integrate, digest, assimilate, and process that. And then in hindsight, we realize that Melanie says, we realize that Melanie says, I have come to the right place. She spelled it differently. <laughs> C-U-M, right? So we understand the levels of pleasure, ejaculation, masturbation, if you will. Don't take it out of context, but you can actually take it out of context. Take it all you want out of context and Go through the gamut of it until you ultimately realize that it took you to a place of shock and awe, simply by what it is. <laughs> and then you will guffaw, you will laugh your ass off at the nonsense that we all go through and think is important or offensive. Going into segment number two with Jason Silva. I love this guy. This video, which you will not see, but you will hear the audio bite. I have to disguise it sadly. I understand. I'm not trying to steal. I'm trying to share. His beautiful teaching um, inspired this presentation tonight. He only says it one time. And it's some, from some famous poet, but it got my attention as to why I use all these words tonight to get your attention, as I mentioned. Jason Silva, bliss fuck. What is a bliss fuck? Get you some spiritual KY and you will understand. Beings are hungry for a kind of ultimate understanding, some kind of cosmic communion, some kind of <laughs> treasure at the end of the rainbow, a pot of gold, right? We all dive through the looking glass, we all tumble down the rabbit hole with this idea that there will be some final answer, some ultimate meaning, some noetic quality that is rendered more real than everyday literal reality, right? And, you know, Carl Sagan, the astronomer, he used to say that understanding is a kind Kind of ecstasy. We are cognitive ecstasy addicts. We are living for these peak experiences, these exhilarating neurostorms of intense intellectual pleasure. But these moments, they tend to be fleeting. Part of the human conundrum is that we have these glimpses of ecstatic illumination and then we fall back into the shadow, right? For a moment, the curtain parts and what had never been seen is devoured by the eyes. It's distinct, abrupt, framed. It is already a memory, right? We immediately memorialize these fleeting glimpses of the eternal, of the everything, and fall back into ourselves, frail and finite and flawed. And what do we do? I believe the immortal words of Houston Smith, but it might be somebody else, who said, how might we turn our passing illuminations into abiding light? How might we render ourselves holy? We have this aspiration to engender godhood, to engender divinity, to become infinite, you know? And there are moments, right, to the tune of the perfect song, when the right instruments harmonize together, the right chorus resonates with your heart and with your soul. You get lost in the music, you get lost in the moment, and everything becomes one. And these peak experiences, these mystical encounters with the numinous, what Rank called the Mysterium Tremendum e Fascinosum, they vindicate our faith. They make us think, yes, 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 there is something more. And sometimes in the iris of a lover's eye, and sometimes when exchanging lip-to-lip -lip communication with a lover, you think, oh my 
God, I can just die in your arms. Jamie Wheel calls this the bliss fuck crucifixion, to die into the moment, to say yes and be reborn, right? Joseph Campbell, the mythologist, calls this the apotheosis, right? After the supreme ordeal you overcome, you are renewed, you are reborn, and you realize that you are a god. But I could be wrong. <laughs> it could all be biochemistry. It could all be secretions and communication and electrical signals between neurons rendering a matrix of mind and meaning that at the end of the day means nothing because we die. We end up in the ground. We rot and disappear forever. What the fuck? That duality, gods and worms. What do we do? What do we do? What can we do? How do we have this dance if we know that it's not forever? Miguel de Unamuno said eternity, eternity, that is the supreme desire. Nothing is real that is not eternal. <sighs> I don't have an ultimate answer. I take the plunge constantly. I meet a girl, I extend my hand to hers, I try to play the right song, and I say, render a holy moment with me. Have this dance, right? Let's be as gods outside of time. Let's co-mingle with, with one another in a space that is timeless, that is beyond self, that is beyond you or me, that becomes just us. Let's render a holy moment. Let's have the eternal dance. And then love falters and then the breakup happens, and then entropy rears its ugly head, and fuck, what do we do? <laughs> Get back up and try again. So far, <laughs> that's, that's what I say. We get back up, we try again. Welcome back to Center Light. Tonight is Center of Light, Center of Light Foundation. Tonight is Center of Light, shock and awe. Have you ever, I'm sure you have, be it in a sexual situation, but in everyday life, everyday life is a sexual situation. We're always intimate, conscious or unconscious, with the divine. Shock and awe, bliss fuck. Have you had, ever had such a moment that expanded you beyond logic. Many years, many years ago, I just started my spiritual walk. I started understanding some of the precepts. I'm going, well, I think I got something going on here. I was on a stage about to play an entire gig, big stage, and the lights were dim. <clears throat> 15 minutes before we actually start, <clears throat> I walk on stage and tune my guitar, make sure everything's good. And as I'm walking on this dimly lit stage, back in those days, I would pick up, I still do, started picking up every penny I would find on the ground and saying, thank you. I recognize this simple symbol of abundance kind of thing. I went down to the stage to pick up this penny to put it in my pocket. Lo and behold, I couldn't pick up this penny to put it in my pocket. I did not understand whatsoever why I couldn't do that. Didn't understand it. My mind began to shut down immediately. And I'm grateful for it. Because something happened in that experience. I was convinced I'm going to pick up a penny there was no penny. The skinny of this news, it was a piece of gum as to why I couldn't pick it up. But when my mind went to a state of shock and awe, I was bliss fucked. I thought that everything I knew to be this penny 
that I could put in my pocket didn't happen. I perceived something and believed something to be so true. I was in shock and awe when it came to the realization that it was not as I thought it would be. Last segment from my bestseller, most recent, Homecoming Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. The link is in these forums. Tonight is center of like shock and awe. Let's fuck. I always provide solutions. I don't just do presentations. I provide solutions. So what is the solution for tonight's presentation? It's called conscious awareness. I start off with my dialogue with God many years ago, 1997, and by asking this question, what have I really been seeking all this time? Many hours of meditation. When I came out, this is what was left with me. What you have been longing for is your own in internal life of fire. But because, until recently, you were looking for love in all the wrong places, you have always fallen short of fulfillment. Your obsession with things external has taken over and left you feeling unguided and alone. I understand. You are never alone. And never are you unguided. But this is the feeling. Your belief in lack has driven your feeling Excuse me. Your belief in lack has driven your ego wants, urges, and addictions. By overlooking the spirit within yourself, you have been unable to realize that it is you and you alone who have held the key to your own bliss. The irony of it all, Keith, is that your free will has cost you a bundle. You yourself have paid a huge price because of the poor choices you have made. And I asked the question, I know, I know, but what is it I'm still not doing correctly? You sometimes still choose to let your ego dictate your life. That is what has kept you snared in a neurotic trap set by no one but yourself. Maybe I'm not exactly clear about what the ego is. Most people are not. So I shall explain by first giving you the definition, then follow that up with further insight. Ego definition, the self, small self, not capital self, small self, ego, the self, the individual as aware of himself, the part of the psyche which controls the impulses of the identity. Spirit continues, your ego is made up of all the fear-based thoughts you have about yourself and the world around you. An ego-driven person tends to gloat and boast to others trying to create a false impression that he or she is happier than they really are. Do you think I fit into this category, Keith? And I say, God, no, not at all. So how do you do it, I ask. Spirit responds, there is no fear in me. And because I am self-fulfilled, I have no need to project false light to try to convince anyone of anything. I am happy just the way I am. As Jason Silva said, I realize <laughs> I accept all that I, spirit continues. I accept all that I brought forth and see nothing I would change. Does that answer your question, Keith? And I say, yes, it does. What you're saying is that when we choose to become enlightened, blissful, heaven comes down to us. Yes, and it is just a matter of time. For time, oh wow, for time is the space between those who take the spiritual path now and those who put it off. If you extract time and space from the equation, what are you left with? Speaking of shock and awe, bliss fuck, this happened in this meditation. So, <laughs> <laughs> Spirit says, Keith, if you extract time and space from any equation, what are you left with? And I say, just one big enlightenment. And then Spirit says, bang, you got it. Welcome to eternity. Take your shoes off. Make your capital selves at home. And I say, I need a moment, exclamation point. 
And Spirit says, <laughs> what's the matter, Keith? And I say, that hit me hard, and I was teary-eyed. Just wait until you really get it. Let me know when you're ready to continue. And I was crying, and I say, I'm ready. Let us look at both, let us look at the way both types of people, I just mentioned what you, was earlier, conduct their lives. Here is the formula to living in shock and awe and constantly moving beyond the logical ooh, ooh, ah, ah, hoo, 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 mucky mind to live in states of being bliss intimate with your divine parent. Conscious practitioners spend at least a little time each day reflecting on their lives day by day, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. This lets them see the patterns and gives them accurate clues accurate clues as to why they are where they are. The self-reflection is the springboard that lets them make the best choice at any God-given moment. And since they are always looking to find, as Dwayne and I discussed earlier, we're looking for the next moment. And since they're always looking to find a better way to flow with the universal current, they take full advantage of it. And the coincidence that ha coincidences that happen in their lives, the synchronicity, and use them to decode signals from the higher self. When I reached over to pick up that penny, it was a signal from the higher self hoping to get my attention, which it did, which I fell into shock and awe. As a result, the quality as a result of the conscious practitioners, as a result, their quality of life is enhanced. By allowing with the universal forces, spiritual practitioners are able to tap in to them for the betterment of themselves and for the rest of mankind. Their road to God is dramatically shortened to only a few lives because they have chosen to learn while they live and are not deeply relying solely, S-O-L-E, S-O-L-E-L-Y, but also solely. On the life overview, you all come to expect when you die. <laughs> In contrast, unconscious practitioners live the same routine day after day. They never reflect on their past, but instead they dwell upon it all the while fearing the future, anxiety. They are rarely open to receive any of the miracles that could sweeten and ease their lives. So they work, work, work to gain the money they think will enhance them. Unconscious practitioners are only concerned with what they think they can get while they are living. They mostly learn about spirit during their death transitions. When they are shown how much the choices they have made affected everyone in their most recent life experience as well as themselves. But even though they have but even though they may have learned from their life overview, it does not mean that they are apt to reach for a higher place in their next incarnation. Their ongoing procrastination will cause them to hack away at life until they experience something of great enormity, which I had to go through. Many of us has to, had, have gone through. Their ongoing procrastination will cause them to hack away at life until they experience shock and awe. It is still a bliss fuck. <laughs> experience something of great enormity that motivates them towards spirit or until they choose the spiritual path of their own volition. Whether now or later, you will be back and I, God, will be waiting. Waiting for you to walk into your divinity, regain your divine consciousness, merge with the expanding universe and create of life Peace, bliss, love. Understand that whether you are, understand that whether or not you live a spiritual life now makes no difference to me, spirit, 
whatsoever. And I ask, in shock and awe, it doesn't. Why do you say that? Because however people live, my love for them does not waver. And I say that's good to know because I still waver. And I sometimes worry that in my wavering, I might cause, I might cause me to hurt myself. And Spirit says, Keith, do you mean your body? <laughs> Remember, your body is not what you are. You are the spirit, indestructible, impervious to fear, disease, and death. If you could hurt yourself, dear one, I assure you that I would become the strict parent some religions make me out to be. And I would stop you from doing so. Are you living your life daily, momentarily, every moment, to be in shock and awe, waiting for the next miraculous shoe to drop? And not the, I'm waiting for the next shoe to drop, as in, bad luck is always around me. This opens up the door to endless miracles, to be in shock and awe every day, always getting thrown out of the box of sameness, blameness, shameness, and gameness. Shock and awe. Orgasms. Godgasms. Inner, infinite spasms of constantly vibrating into the divine. I will see you shortly, soon. I'm going to South Louisiana to see my father. I'll be back in about five days. Always stay in touch. I love not only that you just hear, but that you connect with me. Inbox, email, however you do that. Live in shock and awe. Be, be bliss fucked. Be intimate with your parent. Let's come together. <laughs>